Okay, hey everybody. Um, welcome to this video. Normally when I record videos, they are, um, or they have been Emacs videos. Uh, my using Emacs series, which um, uh, I guess some of you, uh, a number of you have subscribed to, and so you'll get this in your feeds. Uh, but today, uh, this video and a couple others that are going to come along after it are not about Emacs. Um, they're actually about setting up um, a new Linux box and um, setting up Python and setting up the Python Micro Framework Flask. Uh, this is primarily for my current uh, students, my current class. So, so hi guys, if you're watching this. Um, and uh, we just got our laptops. Um, they were supposed to come in at the beginning of the semester, but uh, that wasn't meant to be. So uh, we're running a little bit late on that, but better late than never. Um, I'm actually recording this on a Friday afternoon and the class will be getting their laptops on Monday morning. And um, so what I thought is let me record something to show how to do some of the setup. Uh, that way they would have a reference, but also anyone else who's looking at this, they may gain some advantage. So um, so when you get a new laptop that comes with Ubuntu installed, uh, these are from Dell. Um, you just boot up and it takes you through a little process. You basically click on your language and your keyboard and you select your Wi-Fi and you create your account. And it's, it's similar in a way to installing Ubuntu from a, um, uh, from a USB stick. Um, but if you do that, you have a couple more choices. Uh, but then once it's installed, you boot up and you can type in your username and password and log in. Now, uh, what I'm running here, I'm running Mint, not Ubuntu, so it's similar, um, but a couple of things at the beginning are different. So the first thing you should do is, after you've logged in, you want to update your package selection. So for me, um, I'm going to click here and I'm going to type in software, and um, I'm looking for software sources. If you're doing this under Ubuntu, you're going to go with um, software uh, it's software updates and what you'll do is you'll click on the little Ubuntu symbol that'll be up here it'll bring up something to type into search you'll start typing in software you'll see software updates and then you'll click on that now it's asking me my password so um, I'm actually going to cancel this and I'm going to turn off the keystroke recording for a while so it doesn't show my password um, and so we'll go to software sources and what I would do here is I would type my password. You'll type your password. Um, and the password it's asking you for is your regular login password. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna check, use unstable password uh, packages, um, enable source code. Uh, that's basically it. Um, under Ubuntu, there'll be a whole bunch of check boxes. You should just check all of them pretty much. Um, you know, read them first if you don't agree with it in terms of commercial versus non-commercial software. Um, and then you'll quit this with the X and it'll, it'll ask you, should I update my software cache? Yes, you do, you type yes. Then you're gonna want to bring up a terminal and you can go to this you know, the little Ubuntu thing up here and start typing T-E-R or whatever. But what I'll do instead is I will type in and I'll turn the keys on again, Control-Alt-T, which brings up a terminal. And I'm gonna make it bigger you know, so it's nice and big and we can see everything. And the very next thing I will always do is I'll do sudo apt get update. I don't really need this because the software manager should have done it. Um, but apt get apt is um, the package manager program and apt dash get uh, basically that's how you run things. And so update says update the cache, update my knowledge of packages. And sudo says do this as root. And when you type enter, it's going to ask you for your password. I'm not going to do this for two reasons. One is I've already done it. Um, and two, I don't want to turn on and off the, the thing, the, um, the keys. You, but you type your password, you hit enter, it'll update the packages. Then you type in sudo apt get upgrade. Again, enter. And it'll upgrade all of the packages to the current latest versions. And what you also might want to do is apt get dist upgrade which will um, upgrade, just upgrades your current packages, but it won't deal with dependencies to update other packages, you know, based on dependencies or uninstall unnecessary packages. Dist upgrade tries to upgrade everything as a coherent distribution. Um, so it'll deal with um, dependencies. Uh, once that's done, you might want to up apt get install some things. Like I like this program called Xclip, which I use Clip um, for clipboard stuff. Um, I you know, I'll install Git, which is important for a lot of stuff that we use for software for versioning. Um, if I'm using Ubuntu, I will do uh, the Unity tweak tool. 
Um, but I wouldn't do this here because I don't even know if it exists under Mint. But what the Tweak tool lets me do is it, updates, it lets me update the way I handle Windows. So here if I brought up this other window, um, uh, you might be used to what's known as click to focus, meaning you move to a window and you hit the mouse button and then you have focus. Um, and of course you can use Alt Tab to um, you know, switch between windows as well. I have multiple screens so it doesn't you know, go to the right one necessarily. Um, you know, back here, okay. Um, but um, I like what's known as sloppy focus. And the way that works is it's kind of like focus follows the mouse. As you can see, the focus is changing from window to window. But what it actually does is if I leave this window, the focus stays here. The focus stays on the window that um, that previously had it until you go into something else that gets focus. And so I really like sloppy focus and that's why I need that tweak tool. Um, I'm gonna close this window. I type enter here. It would type password, it would install everything, done. So the next thing I want to do is I use the Emacs editor. Those of you who subscribe to my using Emacs um, uh, videos know that, but um, and my current class will be playing with Emacs soon, but I want the latest Emacs. So what I'll do is um, I'll put in some commands to install the latest Emacs. Basically, I have to add a special repository. So it'll be sudo apt add repository dash y ppa colon ubuntu Elis, hit enter. Um, I'm not going to do this because I install Emacs from source code. It's already there. Then I do another apt get. Ah, can't type apt get update. And then what I'll do is I'll do apt get install sudo apt get install Emacs snapshot, and that'll give me pretty much the latest Emacs. Um, I'll install other packages. Uh, and it'll always be sudo apt get install whatever I want, uh, but this is fine for now. So the next thing is, we already have Python installed. And if I just type in Python, I get Python 2.7. Uh, but if I want to use Python 3, I got to type Python 3. That's fine, and that can be 3.5.2. Um, and I can use this. But when I start doing more complex things, um, I want special packages, special libraries for things. Um, Python has a tool called a virtual environment. And the virtual env or virtual environment virtual env is a package that lets you kind of set up a local Python installation, like within a directory. And so you can install libraries and custom stuff. And if you don't like it, you just get rid of it later on. Um, so to do that, I first need a, py um, a Python package called pip. I actually already have it. If I type pip, it, you know, it works. And pip just basically is a way of installing the latest versions of Python libraries and modules. If I didn't have that, I would do sudo. So that, was just, that was just clear to clear the screen. sudo apt get install python pip. And that's it. It would be done. It would install. Uh, everything would be great. Now, the next thing you'd want to do is, now once I have pip, I do all my Python installs using pip, all the modules. So if I want this virtual environment thing, I can type sudo pip install virtual n. It would ask me for my password. Um, I actually screwed up recording this video, so I already did this, so I'm not going to do this again, but that installs it. Um, so I have it installed. Now, notice that I use sudo pip install for virtual n. That's because I want this to be system-wide, but once I'm in a virtual environment, I'm not going to use sudo anymore. So now we can make a virtual environment. So it's really easy. If I look at my directory here, there's not a whole lot here. Uh, this is actually the video that we're recording as we speak. And I can make a virtual env. And let's call this um, virtual env test1. And that doing its thing, it's downloading some stuff, it's setting some stuff up. And now you'll notice I have this directory, virtual env test1. This is its own little Python environment for me to use. So I can actually change into that directory. And notice that I have these, these other directories here. I can go into the bin directory and I can run source. I can run this activate file. And what that'll do is it'll put me into this virtual environment. So now you'll see I'm in virtual environment test, and that's different. So over here, if I open up another terminal, this isn't in virtual environment test. This is just regular. Uh, they both have Python, but there is a difference. 
So if I type Python here, I'm in Python. If I type Python here, I'm in Python. The difference is that this guy here is running in the global environment, the regular account. This is running in its self-contained space. It doesn't really show very different, but I'll, it'll be clear in a second. So I'm gonna exit this. Now the easiest way to exit a virtual environment is just Control D to close the window. So I'm gonna make another virtual environment here, but this time I'm gonna say, um, let's make a virtual environment. Let's use the Python version dash P. Let's use the Python version Python 3, and let's call this P3 environment 1. So this will let me set up for Python 3. So even if my system is Python 2 installed as the default, now I can do all the stuff that I'm working on in Python 3 in this environment. So we'll give this a couple of seconds. I'll open up another window just uh, because. So you'll notice, um, let's do that again, not quite so big. So you'll notice we now have this directory p3env1. So I want to activate that environment. I can activate it from any terminal I want. It doesn't matter which one. Um, so let's do source. And this time, let's say, let's just go, instead of going all the way into it and then typing source the activate file, I can say from this directory, go into p 3 and one etc., etc. Or I can even say from my home directory, look it for p 3 and one bin activate. Now this guy is in that environment. Now here's where the difference is. I can work here. This is regular directory. I can work anywhere I want. But the difference is let's make a little, let's make a little program. Let's make a program. It doesn't matter which window I do this in. Um, test1.py again things are a little bit slow sorry about that um, ah, where are we? Okay, may have to do with the uh, the video recording and all of that stuff. But anyway, and why don't we say print, let's say just print hello. And this is valid Python 2, but not valid Python 3. So let's save this. And if I come into here and I put this in the background and I type, let's run Python on test1.py, it works. But if I come in here and I say, let's run Python on test1.py. It doesn't work because this version of Python is in the environment, it's Python 3, whereas this version isn't in the environment, it's Python 2, it's the default one. Um, and if I want to get them both in the environment, I can source uh, p3env1 bin activate. And now if I run Python on test1.py, it doesn't work because it's not the right Python. But if I change this and Put the parentheses around it. Woohoo, it works in both cases. And again, the easiest, whoops, the easiest way to get out of these is just close the windows. So that's the idea behind these virtual environments. And we're going to install all sorts of cool things in these environments. Um, and this will let us work in a consistent Python environment from wherever we are. Um, Next video, we'll look at installing Flask and setting that up and setting up the basics there. That might just be one video. It might be a couple. And uh, then after that, we'll probably have a video uh, deploying this to uh, my favorite uh, cloud server environment, DigitalOcean. All right, so I hope you all found this useful. Please leave comments on the blog uh, if you want a clarification, thoughts, ideas. Um, and uh, hope you join us for the next one.